As a beginner in martial arts, you get a lot of tips from a lot of different people. That be from your coach or from an instructor that is training you on a daily basis, from some of your classmates that are a little bit more experienced and already in the martial art you're practicing for a year still more than you, maybe from some friends that do also martial art but something different than you, or from martial arts influencers out there in the internet on YouTube. And the question is, is the tip good or is the tip bad? Is it dumb advice or is it actually a good tip? And if you don't know shit, then you cannot decide which one is actually good and which one is bad advice. And that is why today I have the dumbest tips from the influencers together all in one video. So I basically just asked them what was the dumbest advice that you ever got in your martial arts career and you actually did this for real. And then I put all these advice into this video here for you that you can now learn and not do the same mistakes. Let's go. Sifu Christoph, Ando here from Happy Life Martial Arts. One of the worst pieces of martial arts training advice I've ever heard is that size doesn't matter. That strength doesn't matter. The idea here would be that techniques will save you, that being clever will save you, that knowledge is power. Look, I believe in knowledge, but I also believe in getting into shape. Get in shape and stay in shape because whatever knowledge you have, it's gonna be better served with some speed, power, and flexibility. Get in shape, stay in shape, because conditioning is a technique all on its own. Now the worst piece of advice I've ever heard is you don't need to stretch out. This is usually accompanied with the saying, you never see a lion stretch out before it takes down a zebra. The thing is, lions stretch out all the time. You see cats all the time stretching out so they're naturally flexible. So it already makes a silly argument that way. <laughs> the thing is, even if you're not planning on training that day or doing a warm up or anything like that or working out on the spot, even if you're sitting at a desk all day, stretching is really important because we are still using our muscles and they are in the same position for a really long time. Definitely stretch out every day, even if you're not planning on working out. It'll really improve your quality of life. The first piece of bad advice that I hear a lot is to empty your cup. Now, this will depend on what your goals are and what your style is on whether or not this is good or bad advice. But for me, if I'm coming into a new class to learn a new style, the point of me being there is to incorporate that into my normal fighting. If I empty my cup and then learn this brand new, I will have to relearn it to incorporate it into my style. It's a whole lot easier to just incorporate it immediately. It saves steps, at least for me. The second piece of bad training advice that I hear all the time is that you need to train gi in order to learn no gi. Now, this is specifically for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but the general sentiment applies to pretty much any martial art of you have to learn this martial art in order to learn this martial art. No, you don't. I don't need to learn Muay Thai to learn boxing. I don't need to learn boxing to learn Muay Thai. I don't need to learn wrestling to learn Jiu Jitsu. I don't need to learn gi to learn no gi. Do whatever you want to do, learn it that way, it's usually going to be the easiest and shortest path anyway. It's a whole lot better to approach new material in the way you're going to use it. If I learn a martial art in a way that I know I am never going to use, I will then have to learn it in a way that I am going to use could have just learned it in the way that I am going to use first and saved myself a lot of headache. In every martial art, there are a ton of super specific moves that really only work for their unique rule set. You're not gonna do it. It's not that you have to not participate in class when they're doing those moves, but why spend a ton of time training them? Both pieces of advice are trying to get you to focus on something you're not actually gonna do. And it's not bad, it won't make you worse, but it is an inefficient way to learn. Instructors often give you these pieces of advice because they're more prepared to teach one set of material in one way. It's very challenging for an instructor to tailor their material to each individual student, which is why you have to be proactive in your training and to figure out what you want to do. Hello there, my name is Sifu Alexander Kluk. I am student of Grandmaster Martin Sieber, head of the Chiu Hunga Kung Fu family. And therefore, I'm doing Hunga Kung Fu since 23 years now. The three worst tips I've got in case of martial arts were from different, let's say, Sifus. The first one is to do more cardio. Uh, when I had my fights, my late high fights, full contact fights, some of the problem was that I did not manage my power well. First tip I got is do more cardio, go run. Uh, nothing against running, it's, it's a good exercise and everything, but it was not the solution for that specific problem. And I already knew that, so I ignored it. You can, of course, run a lot.
blood and not increase your cardio or not solve the problem of managing your energy during a fight. The second one uh, of the three worst tips I've got to uh, lift my heel while punching, like in traditional boxing. I know uh, a lot of martial arts do this. In Hungar Kung Fu, we don't do this. We keep our foot to the ground completely. Uh, when I got that tip in a Thai boxing class, which I visited at that time, and those guys were very nice, very cool, they had uh, their experience. But for me, it was a very, very bad tip because I was already uh, training for over 10 years to keep my foot on the ground and now on that evening I should lift my heel to punch, to have more power in my punch and that confused me totally. So the rest of the lesson was like Alex trying to not do what he did the last 10 years. So it was a very, very bad tip for me at that time. The third uh, very bad tip I got was to prepare for getting fat after I got 30. Now I'm 33 years old and I know that was a very, very bad tip. Most of the people maybe get bigger uh, after their 30s, I don't know, but of course that has to do with your exercising, with your diet plan and so on. So that's not, not a very good tip telling me uh, that after 30 I will get fat. So prepare for that. No, don't prepare for that. Just do your best always or you're 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever. Do your best. Hey there, my name is Jorkas and I run the YouTube channel Martial Arts Journey. I used to do Aikido for 15 years, used to be an instructor. Eventually I quit Aikido and moved on to MMA, including boxing, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, kickboxing, etc. And here are my two dumbest uh, martial arts tips that I heard and used to be given as a martial arts practitioner. And number one is that you should wait for your black belt until things will start to work. That was a big myth in Aikido, and I believe other martial arts have it too, where you have doubts about your martial art and things are just not working, you don't see them working. You have this doubt if, if, thing, if your techniques will ever work because there's no proof during your martial art of its effectiveness. But then what you're told is, oh, wait for your black belt. When you will receive your black belt, things will start to work. Then you can apply those techniques in a street fight, then you can apply these techniques in a self-defense situation. It just, it, it takes time. But the truth is, that's bullcrap. Because if a martial art works, you will see the results of it working and you will feel the improvement and you will see how it works out much sooner. So if you go to boxing, for example, in a couple of months, you'll be a much better boxer. Well, not necessarily much better, but you will be clearly a better boxer than those who come in for the first day. If you train for a year, you'll be more advanced than the people who come in for the first day. If they haven't trained anything, you'll kick their ass and you'll see the significance in your changes. Meanwhile, to get a black belt in most martial arts takes at least three years, sometimes four, sometimes more. To wait so long and to believe that only then you will get results, that's silly because that's not true. If you don't see the results, clear results and proof in already a few months or let alone a year, that's already a red flag. And the other one is to trust that your martial art is gonna work out once shit hits the fan in, per se, the street. The thing is, some martial arts, and Aikido is a good example of that, they train in a cooperative setting. They're always doing things together with a partner, nobody's resisting, nobody's really trying to get you. And, uh, and I'm not talking about resistance where somebody grabs and stands there and does nothing, or, or they add more intensity. More intensity is not resistance. I'm talking about active resistance, when somebody's going out of their way to get you, they're improvising, they're being spontaneous, they're trying to trick you. If that's not part of the curriculum, you may train martial art where you just repeat techniques where the other person just lets you do them, essentially. You may have a doubt that, oh crap, you know, does this, will this work out if I'm never attacked? One of the ways they try to counter that doubt, the instructors, is to tell you, oh yeah, yeah, it's gonna work out once you go to the street and once you're attacked, it's just gonna click in. Thing is, it's not. I've been there, I've been attacked a number of times when I was an Aikido practitioner and things did not work out, things did not click in even after years of training. And the thing is, if you don't have, essentially there's a great phrase, is uh, you fight how you train. And if in the training you're not learning to deal with an actively resistant partner doing trying, trying to get you, don't expect that even under worse conditions, when somebody is really trying to get you, essentially maybe even kill you, that suddenly things will change and you will do better. No, uh, the training has to simulate at least a certain amount of that pressure and that intensity that you will experience if you're ever attacked. And if you're not getting to experience that, no, things will not click in for you. So these are the two dumbest things from 
uh, tips for martial arts. So for sure I also want to give you my worst tip that I ever got or heard about. And this tip I did when I was really out of shape. I was 120 kilo, I was overweight, I was partying, I was smoking and I knew I needed to make a change now. So I started with fitness. But really this tip is also applicable for martial arts. Because those two topics are not that unrelated like you might think. So the tip was I need to get more protein in my system when I train. And it wasn't just a little bit more protein, it was a ridiculous amount of protein because I was following the people who had muscle. For sure those are the bodybuilders, they have the biggest muscles, I, I want to have the biggest muscle. So I incorporated a lot of meat, I went out to the store and bought ridiculous amounts of meat in the kilograms for days. And for sure what happened, I got broke because meat is expensive at least here in Switzerland. And I thought to myself, okay I need to have another solution, so what can I do? I can buy protein powder. I would then buy and really have protein powder with everything. I mix protein powder in my coffee, I would do sauces for my dishes with unflavored protein but just to have this extra more in protein in my diet. And I was tracking everything that I ate, so I knew for a fact that I'm eating 2.5 to 3.5 grams of protein powder a day, which is too much really. For the ordinary people like you and me, this is too much. The amounts that I ate, 3 grams, 3.5, 4 grams some days even. And what happened was all this protein that I got into my body didn't go directly to the muscle. You can guess it, it went directly into gas form. <laughs> So basically I was just a walking gas manufacturing <laughs> and this really reduced the quality of my life big time and I switched about two to three months after to a moderate protein amount. My moderate protein amount I mean 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight which is a good amount, a good set point and then you have also all the benefits of the protein without all the negative drawbacks because when you do exercise, when you do martial arts, when you stretch out, when you move your muscle, when you move your body you need protein to repair this fiber to then make you stronger and that's what we want. We want to get stronger and we want to get better fighters. And now I would be generally interested what was the dumbest tip that you ever had or you ever did in your martial arts in your fitness career comment down below and also read a bit through the comments maybe there's something funny going on down there and you should definitely subscribe to the channel because when I had all the influencers together I for sure asked them also about their best tip that they had when they were martial arts beginners and exactly this video is going to be uploaded here on this channel somewhere in the next week when I get it finished and for sure go on to the other influencers I will link them all down in the video description they also have awesome tutorials awesome martial arts knowledge, awesome videos that you can check out when you have a little bit free time between your trainings. And now subscribe to the channel that you don't miss the next video and with that being said let's go out there and train guys right? Let's see you in the next one.